Back in 2006, two local hackers wanted to prove a point to the Philippine government. This resulted in one of the biggest hack and data breach in Philippine history. Welcome to Lead History, where we explore stories from the dark corners of the internet. Our case today is the Commission on Elections hack of the Philippines. This incident is considered the biggest data breach in Philippine history and had put millions of registered voters at risk. On March 27, 2016, hackers under the banner Anonymous Philippines hacked into the website of the Philippine Commission on Elections and defaced it. The hackers left a message calling for tighter security measures on the vote counting machines to be used during the 2016 Philippine general election. Within the day a separate group of hackers called Sec Philippines posted an online link to what it claims to be the entire Commission on Elections database. The leaked files was a staggering 340 gigabytes of data containing the personal information of 55 million registered voters. The data included full names, birthdays, addresses, precincts, passport numbers and more. It even had biometric fingerprint information. Initially, the Commission on Elections Chairman, Andres Bautista said that he was told that no confidential information was leaked, saying the breach would not affect the election body's preparation for the 2016 elections. The Commission also said that the database on its website is accessible to the public and no sensitive information is hosted on the website. The Commission was initially even saying that the database might be fake and no biometrics data were compromised. But we all know now that all these initial claims were wrong and we had in fact the biggest breach in Philippine history. Around three weeks after the incident, the Commission on Elections announced that the National Bureau of Investigation apprehended one of the suspected hackers. The hacker was identified as Paul Batang, a 20-year-old IT graduate student, in his home in Sampaloc, Manila. Bitang, who claims he is a member of the hacking group Anonymous Philippines, admitted that he defaced the Commission on Elections website, but denied stealing and leaking the data. He said that the hacking was intended to show how vulnerable the Commission on Elections website was. Basically, he was trying to prove a point. About eight days later, a second hacker, named Jonald Ossis, a 23-year-old computer science graduate was apprehended by the NBI at his house. In a press conference held after the arrests the Commission on Elections identified Joan Aldasis as one of the ringleaders of the notorious hacker group LulzSec Philippines. Bautista said that Aldasis admitted hacking the website and leaking the Commission on Elections database. He also admitted that he collaborated with Bitang in the hacking incident. What happened was, Bitang, the first hacker breached the server of the Commission's website, then Aldasis, the second hacker downloaded the 340GB voter database five days before the website was defaced. There was a suspicion of a third hacker but the identity was never confirmed and could still be at large. Ultimately, copies of the Commission on Elections database appeared in multiple data leak sites outside of the original LulzSec post. Most of those sites are down now but copies can still be found around the internet. The National Privacy Commission of the Philippines decided on during the year that the Commission on Elections was found responsible for violating the Data Privacy Act and recommended criminal prosecution of the Commission on Elections chairman. Fast forward to 2020. The first hacker, Paul Batang, was cleared of all cyber crime charges. According to the Manila Regional Trial Court, the prosecution failed to prove guilt beyond reasonable doubt. According to the decision, there is no direct evidence categorically linking him as the perpetrator for the crimes charged. According to the decision, they cannot discount the possibility that the author of the hacking posts and videos is a different person, who somehow accessed accused social media accounts. The court also cited that the IP address reportedly used to deface the Commission on Elections website was actually assigned to the National Bureau of Investigation, the agency investigating the case. What about the second hacker Jonal Daosis? As of now, we have been unable to find out what happened to him. Perhaps he is a law enforcement asset now. This wraps up our story. But before we leave you, here are some things that we found interesting in this case. First, anything that you put in the internet is at risk. Putting 55 million records exposed is a recipe for disaster. Second, we were surprised how fast law enforcement managed to catch the suspects. Philippine Cyber Police is probably much better than we thought, or the hackers were sloppy. Lastly, good cyber forensics practices is a must. We think poor forensics practices led to the hackers slipping through the courts. That's all for today. This is Lead History.
Thank you for exploring the dark corners of the internet with us. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy stories like these. Till next time.